In this video, we're getting back to the 2010 Ducati Multistrada that I've thoroughly gone through and made a good running and reliable machine. However, there's still one area of this bike that leaves a lot to be desired, and that is the starting system. So just like any Ducati ever made, Starting this bike up is a slow, laborious process that in fact is really hard on the starting system such as the starter motor and the sprag clutch and eventually will wear one of those two items out and to fix those things not only cost a lot of money but it's also a pretty big job. So in this video we're going to be doing our best to prevent that issue from ever happening in the first place. So to see what I mean, check out how slow this bike is to start. So if you're used to like a Suzuki or a Honda, you know those things start right up. But Ducatis pretty much all start that terribly. It sounds like the battery is really low or something in the electrical system's not quite right that's not giving that starter motor the full juice to get this high compression L twin engine cranked over. So this bike's battery is completely topped up. I leave it on a tender. It's not the battery's problem. It's not low on cold cranking amps or anything like that. The problem actually stems from the cables in the starting system. So to fix that problem, I've got a solution over on the bench. Here is a high capacity lead system made by Moto Electric. And the idea is you take the original cables out of the starter system and you put these higher capacity, much thicker, much higher quality starter cable system in its place. So you can see the lugs on the end are very high quality, thick copper lugs very high quality cables. So you can see this kit comes with three and they're pretty long. If you saw my 1198 video, the cables in that system are much shorter than this and there's only two of them. So you can see this kit is very comprehensive. It comes with zip ties and little scotch bright pads to kind of clean the connector surfaces. It's got a boot to seal up everything. It's got uh, wipes to make sure all the connecting surfaces are clean. It comes with a set of gloves. So this whole thing costs, I think it was $160, which sounds like a lot of money, but just check out how much it costs at a dealer to have the sprag clutch replaced in the starting system. Not something you want to deal with, even if you're DIYing it, it's a big job to get that out of there. So we're going to try and fix this once and for all. So let's get this thing installed. First step in installing these cables is removing the seats and removing the skid plates underneath. Now we're going to unplug this white plug on the solenoid and then kind of pull it out of its mounting cradle. We take this plastic cover off to expose these two lugs. So the lug on this side is the one that goes directly to the positive side of the battery. I'm just going to replace that cable entirely. This piece we're gonna swap out for the new one. And before I stick the new one in there you can see the difference on those lugs. See how much thicker this is? Not to mention it is copper instead of this kind of nickel or zinc coated steel. So all these things do matter. Before we snake that back down there we want to put this cable it has these two ends it's pretty long in here. So we're not going to be using this cable anymore. Just kind of get that out of the way. Now we want to put this one under the bracket too. Now we can put the solenoid back in place. So this wire is eventually going to be disconnected from both ends, so it's not like it's a live wire. Uh, you don't actually remove this because it winds around and goes into various places. I mean, you could technically remove it, but it's kind of a pain. Just leave it be. We'll make sure that this is on the correct side of that conduit, small diameter conduit wire. Okay, 
Now that end is taken care of. Now we have to deal with how to route this snake of a wire. I think I'm supposed to route it through here. behind the engine here and bring it around to right there. Okay, and then you just kind of bring it along here and this seems really long, so I guess I'm just gonna loop it around. And the end point is the starter motor lug on the bottom, so we're gonna disconnect the original one and put this in its place. All right, so that's on there. Now we wanna hit this with electric contact cleaner. Just get it clean. So you can have the best cables in the world, but if where they connect isn't clean, that's all for nothing. Now I'm gonna get some zip ties and kinda of secure this cable a little bit better. See if I can't take out some of the slack by routing it here and zip tying it to this oil line. We'll also want to zip tie the old starter cable to there as well so it's not hanging out and in the way. Going with the old starter lug, put some shrink wrap on it so it doesn't get water on it and chance of shorting out against something. Slip the boot back over, and I'm actually gonna pull it over here and zip tie it against itself, kind of just up in the, the nest of wires that are on that side of the bike. All right, so that's zip tied there and here, and now it is pretty sturdy. Now we gotta go take care of the negative ground side cables. All right, the first thing we wanna do is totally cover the old ground wire. And you just pull it down here and there is a ground bolt right there that connects to the engine casing. It's kind of hard to get on camera, but it's right there. You can see two ground wires going to it. So that is the negative side now connected. I had to do some squirrely things, you know, routing it down here. And I poked it out behind this frame member and did like a U-turn back to the bolt in the engine casing. A little custom on that one, but it should work anyway. All right, one last thing left to do, and that's to connect these to the battery. All right, so that is the cables all installed. Let's give this a shot and see if the starting is improved. Well, I'd say so started up probably in half the time and the crank over speeds a little bit faster so that is a result
say that's quite an improvement. So now the 1198 has these cables on it and this bike has those improved cables on it. So hopefully that means the starting systems on both these Ducatis will last a very long time. Well, thanks for watching. See you guys again next time.